Howdy Heroes Heart, this is Kyle Ferguson. I'm sitting down today with BBJ Stukov of Storm Esports. This is from the playoffs day two versus Chili Mountain. BBJ, thank you for joining me. No problem, thanks for having me. It should be fun. I'm really excited about this build. I'm really excited about this match. Uh, before we get going, you were just blind first pick Stukov. Was there any plan in the background for the rest of the team or just, hey, Stukov, he's good. I've got a good win rate on him. Nah, pretty much any time Stugov's up, you kind of got him pick him because he's really annoying to play against. He he enables like some comps that uh, I don't think we've really seen much of in playoffs, but there's some comps with Stukov first pick that can be really obnoxious. And then, uh, I mean, he's just all around good. Only thing he doesn't really bring is cleanse, but this game we have a bunker and a falling sword. So kind of covered on that end. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because that was the other sort of problem that might be foreseen with Stukov is that the enemy team might do one of those things, but you mentioned annoying comps. Is this an annoying comp? Is this a purposeful Stukov comp, or did that just sort of happen in the background eventually with <laughs> the Mephisto? Uh, no, I think this is just, yeah, happened. Kept the Mephisto on this map. Pretty oppressive. And then, you know, Stukov can protect him, heal him, and then slow him down. It's... To just set up his W to land permanently, pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how it kind of goes down here. And you get to play really aggressive throughout this game. Being Stukov with a Mephisto, is there any sort of special considerations you're giving here at the start? Or is it kind of the normal, I'm going to hang out with the assassin to make sure they survive kind of thing? Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of hanging around with my goons. Uh, I popped my level one here to try and get a kill. But I mean, we don't have a ton of CC. So my level one, I mean, trading it for Anduin pulls probably pretty good for us. Just because now they don't have that. And my level one, I'm in with Joanna, main tank. You're not really looking for kills early, generally. Let's talk about that level one a little bit, because if you have not been paying attention closely to the Stukov changes, there was a pretty massive change to how reactive Ballisto Spores works now. While below 50% health, by the cooldown of Bio Kill Switch refreshes. Activate to instantly spread a weighted pustule to all nearby enemy heroes and reset the cooldown of Bio Kill Switch. From above, this almost feels like people die mysteriously by Stukov for no reason. Yeah, I mean, you can do some pretty silly things, just solo killing backliners if you're, like, sitting in a bush. I've had, you know, some Volus face check my bush. You land your W on them, you auto, you press your D, then you hit your 1 and your D again, and you get, like, three autos and two W procs, and you can solo kill them. But, uh, I mean, generally, just in fights, it basically is Earthquake, is the way I think about it, generally. Oh, yeah. Everyone around me gets pretty much 70% slowed if they go on me or near me. And what? it, uh... Later in the game has pretty big ramifications with uh, resetting your trait cooldown. Because with the 16 Pox Populi, you hit your trait, and then all your allies who got trait on them still have a heal on them. So you can reset by hitting your one and then heal again. So you no can pop way. Two, uh, two healing pustules on the same person. Yeah. Okay, because I was wondering, we got with Super Strain eventually here, and there's Diablos, and there's Roots, and you know, it's, it's, usually we would see something along that line. But that is, that is creepy fascinating, and very cool yeah i've been a, a super strain enthusiast for a long time but i've kind of converted <laughs> now awesome so is that also kind of working into this vigorous reuptake we're seeing bio kill switch heals 30 percent more when detonating three or more healing pathogens yeah so it's bigger heal especially when you double proc your heal at 16 but also just uh you have a lot more trait procs generally with this stukov level one now because uh if you're low which you can generally get low in fights a decent amount because you can kind of not front line completely, but you're in like, you know, not in the back. So, I mean, right here, I'm pretty deep. And then the earthquake. Yeah, uh, and everyone gets clogged on you pretty big. Yeah. And you're then we just watch Kepi kill him. But, uh, yeah, the way like New Stukov plays, Biotic got nerfed, so it's down to 50 from 75, which is pretty decent in terms of the damage that the autos are doing. Mm. And, uh, you just proc your trait more with this, so the sustain feels pretty nice. That's cool that that evolved that way, and uh, excited to see the level 13 pick up as well as we continue here. Uh, as the sort of lanes are destroyed and we get back to objective, you kind of start fulfilling this more normal healing role, then stepping up when your one is on cooldown. But it seems like it's Stukov's job to clear this lane. Is that a comp thing, or should most Stukovs be looking to participate in that way with your big autos 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you bring big autos to the uh, clear, and then I think Kepi was calling that he wanted globes, so I wanted to, you know, just kill the globe minion, which, mm. you know, Stugov's not going to AoE down a wave, but he can one or two autos a globe minion and get him mid pretty fast. Yeah, pretty important. We actually, in the actual cast and match, jumped into comms and heard the Mephisto hungry for globes as it went on, but that's spied up there in the corner for anybody curious. Uh, at these moments where you're working on a wall as a team, most, let's say, even Platt Stukovs would put down a hand on the wall opening and then chill there for a very, very long time. It seems like you've got way busier things to do than that. Uh, yeah, I mean, just as long as you can get a sidewall down before the Punisher goes and it's frozen, there's no real threat of being, like, under their keep. So, and your, your auto's on the buildings. I mean, they chunk, right? I'm mm. hitting for, like, 400, and it's not even level 10. So, the more you can auto faster you push as a team so it's pretty nice this is before the most recent balance patch are you curious at all about that fetid touch attack weaving where you can do the ranged and the melee attack and switch it off uh not on this patch but maybe in the future if they nerf his uh reactive blitz for the one <laughs> that's fair that's see fair. Some use. yeah you end up picking up the massive shove. Uh, just for general philosophy, here I see an amazing massive shove that goes on your rel while she's doing her Ardent Defender. Get out of here. We don't want to deal with that. It's fabulous. But what would be your mental switch that causes you to pick between the two heroics? Uh, I'm just a shove gamer. Okay. Through and through. I don't really uh, play the other one. There's plenty of people that do, and I think it's a fine. You know, I think either one's fine. I just have pretty much played shove the whole time so i just have more experience on it and i think uh i don't know the lower cooldown and like the single target of it like sometimes you don't want to swipe everyone away right sometimes you just want to push one person out and be able to focus the rest stuff like that do you think that's a consideration of just skill and the ability to aim and actually hit what you're going for would you recommend a lower skilled player go for something like flailing swipe if they might miss their shove uh, I'd probably go for swipe. Swipe's more reliable too, right? If you need like an interrupt on something and you need to disengage, you know, shove can miss or sometimes shove can even get you killed if you shove one, but the rest of their team just keeps running at you. But uh, generally I feel like I'm able to shove one person out and either make the fight like a short 4v5 until they're back or, you know, stop like a Diablo Q in, a URL jump or the light bomb from hitting somebody, stuff like that. And I see you doing a lot of warding for the team. You guys got a Blaze, you got a Johanna, but you're actually taking up quite a few of the bush positions here. And that's all because of the reactive Ballisto Spore just power you would have in that situation should they run in. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably the biggest threat in a bush. Like, Johanna's not really mm. doing much if somebody face checks her. Blaze can stun him, which is kind of nice, but, you know, I can just put two 70% slows on them for about four seconds, which is uh, a lot of CC. That makes sense. So a consideration of the tank, a Garrosh, for instance, would probably be more threatening in that bush or a Diablo. Yeah, yeah. If there's a Garrosh in the bush, I'd probably stand behind him and then he'd, you know, toss him to me and then I'd do it. But I'm the big scary person on the team this game. You also have the thrilling job of making sure the camp times at the exact moment you needed to. Yeah. I don't know why we did this one so early, but, uh, you know, I got to chill here, <laughs> drink some water during the game, I'm sure. <laughs> And your assassins clearly played a little safer during that moment. Uh, we have a uh, multi-shot Vala, who's just sort of staying back, able to clear. Any other considerations as you enter the mid game here? Anything on the enemy team that is causing you to play different or be concerned? So they have Anduin. So I didn't go for root this game just because, you know, I hit a root on one person. He gets Anduin pulled and we don't have really a ton of ways to force pull outside like my root, but popping pustules into Anduin, I'm a pretty big fan of, because uh, you hit your W on them, and then you just kind of leave it there, and sometimes Anduin will pull if it's on like their front line or he's getting hit, and then he pulls the popping pustule onto him, oh. and then you can proc it, and you'll hit the slow on him in the back line. Sometimes you can run him down That's because of it. That's very cool. Detonating weighted pustule with bio kill switch within 1.5 seconds of its expiration increases the damage by 150 percent and applies the damage and slow in an area and we hear us have a weighted pustule applied to them so i, I was really excited that you didn't take virulent reaction because i rarely play stukov i rarely heal and i love him but i can't do this virulent reaction thing very well however this is almost exactly an anduin anti-situation yeah like there He's got the slow on him now after he pulled the Diablo. Didn't really do much there, but maybe, you know, stopped him from walking up and healing people. 
just, you know, makes his life annoying. It's not sure. fun to be slowed in the back line. And then, yeah, I mean, I do it generally against good single target, like uh, cleanses, stuff like uh, Uther, Anduin, even Lucio I think it's okay against, because, you know, Lucio blowing his cleanse on one person rooted is nicer than having to cleanse, like, you know, three people and use three high five cooldowns on a big slow. That's true. Has that kind of changed now, uh, now that he doesn't get unstoppable at 20? Uh, yeah, I don't know what's happened with Lucio. We'll see. Interesting. Not, I'm not sure. He's definitely not, you know, insta pick anymore, I think, because yeah. uh, he's not win the game at 20 instantly. But uh, I can still see him being pretty impactful because he still does everything else that he was good at. He just doesn't assassinate your whole team. That's fair. He, he can be very annoying in that way. So any sort of cleanse could just interrupt and would be such an obvious target for the virulent reaction that we can start to go down this popping pustules. Good chance that person will run into the team anyway. Is there... So you've got like a little uh, indicator here on your bar about the weighted pustule enemies affected by it. But is it just a feeling at some point when you know you're in those final 1.5 seconds to make use of... Yeah, I generally pustules? just watch it over their head a okay. bit. Because the timer like ticks down. Um, but I mean, sometimes you have to forgo like the 13 proc for just faster healing. Because if you hit your W on one person, you want to get the trait reset from your seven so even if you have the option you can always do it i would see your use of it there too it, diablo is living the heck out of it it is rather impressive and very good use of soul shield soul shield can't block my autos though <laughs> that's true and i Wait. see i totally see the shield go up and you're like no 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 just charging at him yeah i do go down though i think i could have lived i'm not sure if uh I had a DF available. This is an I remember extremely thinking chaos. I could have lived in this one. Yeah, this is a lot of yeah, chaos going on here. Goes wild. Not sure how we uh, come out on top of this one with no more deaths besides me, but uh, I'll take the credit for it. I ate the cooldowns for the team, obviously. There you go. There you go. At 16, you grabbed up the Pops Populi, which we already talked about a little bit here with that sort of combination with your. Well, you're reactive Ballisto Spore, and now everything. Is there anything else in this stack now that you're considering with Pox Populi? Uh, not if you have that level one. I okay. think it's just uh, too good. And now, like, after 16, you kind of change your play style a bit. Because early, like, till 16, you're using your level one as, like, a damage, you know, CC reset. And now after 16, uh, you can just throw your Q on everybody. When the other team goes in, they do damage. You pop your D, and then you hit your one and hit your D again. And, like... It's about 2,100 healing on, you know, whoever has a D on them, as long as you have your uh, level 4 proc as well. So, so I know... You can, uh, fights pretty hard. I know previous reactive Ballisto Spores, there was kind of an almost you know, old school, like 2017, hit me, hit me, Tyrael kind of play style to it. Do you still want to get in that deep and focus on taking damage, or is the activatable just enough? Just play safe. Uh, I mean, early game, you can definitely still play the uh melee assassin stukov run at them and then i mean you don't even have to wait for them to hit you this time like if somebody is overextended has no escape you can just try to land your w on them auto d pop your one and slow them again and just hope your team follows up but then later on in the game even with the old uh stukov level one it was generally pretty risky to be uh too far up just because you could get bursted once they have their alts or their you know 16 power spikes with damage sometimes so uh yeah now kind of just chilling sitting back sure seeing a lot uh, lot more not necessarily passive play because you're going to be ready to react to what happens but definitely not getting yeah. in there as you were before clearing this lane and getting up on diablo yeah now me front mining is actually bad because they could kill me whereas before i mean i got flipped in at uh was it the first shrine i think that was up here and took like almost no damage so with this positioning, what are you considering most? Are you trying to, you tried to disengage Diablo there, now you're trying to maybe clog the front line for Mephisto? Yeah, I'm just kind of sitting in the mid range, just trying to, like, as long as I can land my W on Diablo, every like uh, Q, then I just get my trait reset on him. And here I would kill him, but he's got a broken 16 talent that reduces my damage. <laughs> so my big old smacks aren't doing that much. Uh, and that fight I think I actually messed up because I think I could have got a trait reset on Kepi and healed him for like another thousand. 
but I didn't press my D in time. Or I'm not sure if the Junkrat Tire like knocked me away, so I couldn't press my D. Like I was in midair or whatever Junkrat Tire does to you. Oh, but I think is... I could have saved Cappy. This is kind of interesting. We have a lot, a lot of different versions of power reduction that happen in the game, and Debilitating Flames is just a damage reduction rather than any sort of spell power reduction. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty good talent. Because you only have to hit, what, four, four Ws on somebody? So if they're, you know, a melee hero, they're pretty much always getting it applied on you if they're on you. But well, uh, it doesn't really do much to Mephisto and Vala, luckily for us. Well, if you didn't get to enjoy the replay before, uh, the Diablo ran all the way to near bot lane before finally stopping in terror of your mighty arm. I did not see that. But eventually they hard, but they made, chased them. <laughs> they made sure they were them. very, very far away from you before they decided it was safe to go back. Should have gone and sent a message to cattle. Level 20, push come to shove. Massive shove slows its target by 50% for four seconds upon colliding with terrain. If massive shove pushes a target more than 1.25 seconds, its cooldown is reduced by 15 seconds. Uh, yeah, I mean, the talent's just good. Like, uh, if you get the reset, it means they're really far out of the fight. And even sometimes you can just do like short range shoves and a 50% slow for four seconds is quite a lot. If you just, you know, close range shove somebody into a wall, you can kind of chase them down. Uh, and I think it's just better at coring. Normally, if it was a closer game, maybe I'd go the uh, trade 20, which would allow me to like put my D or my E under maybe a Rel or a Diablo and then pop it to silence them. Let me try to kill them there. But uh, I felt like we could core. So I just figured I'd take the uh, shove down. Oh, I've all stole your kill. Yeah, it's big chaos. We'll have a talk about it later. <laughs> and um, yeah, here we pretty much clown put the Joe on level 20. That's just healing us probably more than I ever could, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, Stealing your thunder, but you're getting, getting the big melees big in there. Beefy autos on core. Right, right. Left hit for counts. I think one of the most impressive things about this is that Mephisto was able to avoid kind of those self-serving talents like the slow for himself and just take advantage of how much clog that Stukov did in the area throughout that game. Yeah, I mean, we were pretty much three supports of all in a Mephisto because Blaze is throwing down oils, Joe's making space, and I'm, you know, throwing a puddle down or slowing people. And then Kepi just has tons of CDR in his build and just doing big damage while IB sits back throw some W's and eventually, you know, mana cores down like their Urel and their Diablo later in the game. An oil spill is immense and a 50% slow just passive. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it's basically slowing sense at a level four. Oh my goodness, that's a horrible thought. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that at all. I don't like yeah. that at all. Uh, and now any... his Q is basically chromy Q damage, I think. I got nerfed a bit this patch, but it still hurts. Any advice for Stukovs who are just trying to learn the character? They saw this game, they saw this build, and they want to emulate BBJ. Um, you know, you gotta push your limits a bit. You gotta, you know, test how much you can get away with. Because I think sometimes, you know, being the bait on this build is the best thing. Where if you know they go in on you, you just alt your uh, like alt Q to instantly Q yourself, pop your D, and then you're one and D again, and then. You know, you kind of walk out while they're all slowed and you let your team clean them up. Good advice. So, I and mean, then, sometimes you're going to die doing it, but you got to learn. But make that switch around 16 when that power starts to yeah. wane a little and bit. And then 16, yeah, 16, you're a big healer again. So you don't need to abuse your level one for utility as much. Thanks for that cool combo that we saw here in this video. Well, thank you so much for the information and the rundown of this awesome game of Stukov. Everyone here at YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell for more Learn to Play Here's the Storm content, as well as the upcoming Grand Finals for Season 2 of the CCL.